it's Morgan, and today I am here with Miss CJ Redmine, author of the Shadow Queen and the Defiance trilogy, here at the Southern Festival of Books, and I'm going to be interviewing you. So, my first question is one that I have to ask everybody because it is surprisingly descriptive of who you are. Okay. Is, what is your favorite and least favorite word or phrase in the English language? Well, oh, man. <laughs> I don't know that I that I have a favorite favorite. Well, perhaps Loki. Loki could be a favorite. Um, but least favorite, least favorite is moist. It's a terrible word. It's awful. You think like maybe if it applies to cake, it might be good. But every other connotation is nasty. I try really hard never to use it in my books. What does CJ stand for? Uh, so Calamity Jane is usually the answer that I give everybody, so it's actually um, a name that I don't use anymore, so CJ is my name. So, uh, what is your favorite book you've read in 2016? Um, I've read a lot of great books this year, but my favorite, I don't know that I have a favorite, so I'll just go with the most recent book that I read, and that was Minnie McGinnis's The Female of the Species. Yes, I need to really, it's gritty and hard-hitting, and it's just one of those unforgettable books that stays with you for a really long time. I think it's her best work. Oh, wow. So, wow. Have you read all of her books? I have, yeah. Wow, I haven't read a for yeah. I would say with Mindy, I mean, all of her books are really solid, uh, but this is special. This one is special. Definitely. So, I know you love Supernatural. I do. So, have you played Kiss, Mary Kill before? Um, I think I did play that one time. Are you going to do that to me? I am. Oh my gosh. Sam Dean Cass. Oh my goodness. How come I can't kill any? <laughs> yes, I can because they'll come back. They always come back from that. Um, kiss, is it, what is it? Kiss, yeah. Mary, kiss, Mary, kill. Kiss, Mary, kill. kill. Okay, well you have to kiss Dean. I mean, yeah. really? Like, really? I'm not dead. And I would marry Sam because he's like your loyal puppy. And he also is really good at hacking things. Yeah. And so, and then I would kill Cass, but only because he would come back. He always comes back. So, uh, this is, the, I'm getting into bookish questions now. We're, awesome. we're going to be focusing on the Shadow Queen. Okay. Because I read it last night. And and you sent me a really sad <laughs> video. I was like, I hate you, but thank no. you so much. That's all right. That, that um, I will die in upon your tears for days. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I told you. I told you. Um, so, the Shadow Queen was pretty diverse. Mm -hmm. You had different um, races. But... Did you have to force that upon the book, or did the book kind of no. speak that to you? No, I mean, the characters just come to me, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they are who they are as they show up on the page. And honestly, um, I we have a multicultural family. Two of my daughters are Chinese. My two best friends are, are both black. So when I look at a world in a story world, it is diverse. Um, it just it shows up the way that the world is around me. But I do also make deliberate choices with my characters. And in this book, I had to make Lorelai white because Snow, Snow White. white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't going to work any other way. But for other books in this series, um, I'm just now starting the writing of book four in the series. And so far, the only white heroine is Lorelai. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Diversity for the win. Yes. So the spells and the countries and the people all had very interesting names. Mm -hmm. uh, Mardushka, I can't remember most of them. but. Yeah. Uh, Falk Rain Mountains, were they based off of a specific language? Mm -hmm. Which one? Yeah, um, different for each kingdom. When I do world building for a kingdom, and I'm building a kingdom and a culture from scratch, I really look at the etymology that I want to use. So for the Shadow Queen, um, the main kingdom that this takes place in is Ravenspire, which is the name of the, the entire series. And that is a Germanic base. And I did that um, partially because Laura liked it to be white, obviously, but also because I am playing around with fairy tales. A lot of the fairy tales I'm using are Grimm's fairy tales, which is also a Germanic, and I wanted to do a little shout out to that. Um, but then Morkant, which is the kingdom to the north, which is where the Mardushkas come from and the magic comes from, that is a Russian base. And then the kingdom the dragons come from has a Norse space. So Gavril was really spoke to me because I have definitely had some people in my life, like my stepfather, like my uncles and my grandparents, mm -hmm. my grandfather, my grandparent, uh, my grandfather, who definitely are non-parental, non, you know, biologically parental, but are definitely father figures. Did you have someone like that in your life that really inspired that? Or was that just um, your No, father? I didn't actually. I mean, I had my father, um, and I was close to one of my grandfathers. But I just felt like Lorelai needed that sort of stable relationship there because 
you know, her father had been ripped away. She'd already lost her mother, and she had a very conflicted relationship with her stepmom, obviously. She has, like, the worst, like, first yes. three chapters ever. Yes, she has, you know, it's rough, right? It's rough. Yeah. Um, so I just, that sort of father-daughter bond felt like what she naturally needed. It wasn't something I felt like Gabriel went in planning on developing with her, but then it was what needed to happen because you know, he was taking care of them for so many years. Uh, but also the sadness that he gave up his bond with his own children in order to take care of her, and, and she didn't even know that because he didn't want to give her that guilt. I just, he was a very special character he to me. He was awesome. Yeah. Gabriel was like amazing. I have yeah. to say my favorite character was the bird, and I'm forgetting the bird's name. Sasha. Sasha. Yes. Sasha was my favorite everyone, character. Everyone tells me, oh, we love the bird the best. <laughs> it's like, yay, Sasha. Yeah. Um, so I was reading this, and this might sound awkward, but there were three songs that really distinctly, um, Out of the Woods by Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. You Were Not Alone from Into the Woods, and uh, X's and O's for some reason. Uh -huh. Were there any songs that spoke to you while you were uh, writing this? Yes, I actually have public playlists on Spotify for all of the books that I published. Um, so, trying to think of the songs for this one. I know for Irina, who's the evil queen, I had a couple of different songs from the band called In This Moment. And you'd have to look at the playlist to see what specific ones, because I can't remember off the top of my head. For um, Cole, the song that I had for him was from You, Me, at Six, which is the stupidest band name you've ever heard. Like, you have all the word words in the English language at your disposal, and this is what you come up with as your band name. But um, the song that, and I'm trying to remember the name of the song now. Again, probably just look it up and maybe put a link up for the whole playlist. But the song really speaks, if you listen to the words, it's cold. At one point he says, I am no king, I have no crown. I mean, it's just like, it was cold. Um, and, and then the rest of the songs were Lorelai or Lorelai and Leo or you know, just the mood of the story as a whole. Absolutely. So the Snow White speaking to birds thing kind of definitely becomes a very important part towards the end. I mean, through the whole book with, yeah. with Sasha, but towards the end, I loved that. I almost started screaming and crying at the same time because that was awesome. But is there a specific animal that you would like to be able to speak to telepathically? Oh, yes. Cats. Of me all too. sizes. Yes. Like house cat, all sort of yeah. the and the tiger. Mm -hmm. Yes. My thing, because they're so loyal, but they're also evil. But I think also yeah. they want. <laughs> Llamas are awesome. Llamas are awesome. They know they're awesome. They carry themselves like you are all beneath me. I can spit at you out of either end. Choices. I think a llama would be pretty llamas, awesome. Llamas. But if I like, got into a llama's head, I feel like it would just be a lot of me, me, me. <laughs> so I don't know. It may not be as interesting as I hope. I mean, hey, you never know. Llamas could have a bit hidden depth. They could. They could. You should write a book about llamas. I should. That would be fun. <laughs> Like a children's book. Yes. Uh, out of the three Raven Spire books you've written, because you've written three so far, have you not? Which is your favorite? Oh, man. I, I honestly don't have a favorite. I really love them all, but I always commit to the one that I'm currently working on. That's, that's the one that has to own my heart the most. Um, and I just turned in the first draft for book three, so I would say... At the moment, that's my favorite because that's the world that's and the characters that's really, really alive in my head and still talking to me. Uh, but I'm starting the outline for book four, so that's going to start edging that out. But I, I really, you know, fairy tales are just in my DNA, and I really love the world. I love the kingdoms. I love the characters. So I'm loving this the uh, sneak peeks you're posting on Facebook. If y'all didn't know, she has a Facebook page. She posts a bunch of really interesting parts of her books before they're even out in art form. Right. Um, I will leave a link down below to the app because it's awesome. You should go read those. They're really interesting. Um, but lastly, what can we expect from you? Um, well, of course, the Raven's Fire. We have uh, the Wish Granter coming out as Raven's Fire 2. That comes out Valentine's Day of 2017. So, you know, if you weren't sure what to get your special someone, a book about a homicidal fae hits the spot every time. Uh, that is the next chapter in Rumpelstiltskin's life. And uh, so basically, yeah, he will grant you the wish of your heart, but in 10 years he'll return for your soul. That's dark. Oh no. <laughs> That's, That's dark. bad. Yeah, That's dark. and it's the, um, the plucky princess who gets in pretty much over her head because she's determined to save her twin brother from the wish that he's made. <laughs>
So, okay. Well, thank you so much for the You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So, go pick this up. It's really good. And then go pick up the wish grant here when it comes to stores and Bye, humans.